But let's get into the main news. We've got several yeah. things lined up. Let's start off with the big one that everybody mm. is still talking about. Mm. Liverpool and Man City. Manchester, that yeah. was a fantastic encounter <coughs> at Anfield. Yeah. It didn't go Man City, so we'll get to Man City in a bit there. Yeah. But let me take your general comments on the game itself and then resume into Liverpool. What did you make of that encounter that was played um, last week, um, a few Sundays or a few days ago, last week Sunday at Anfield? The arrogance of Pep Guardiola. First, <laughs> first thing on the line for me, that, that, that had to be um, deciding that with a weakened side, he would still go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Liverpool is the most pep thing ever. But I felt as if he had seen enough of this Liverpool squad to know when to bend the wheel a little to be able to get the best out of a situation. I don't blame him entirely because you look at how Manchester City ended the league against Liverpool last They beat Liverpool last season. So there's every bit, I mean, the tendency to think that we have the upper hand over them mentally and regardless of how it goes down, we are the champions, they are the chasers, they are more under pressure in this situation. But Liverpool, on the other hand, also had their own, um, if I would say, skeletons to get over. And that eventually is what happened. I mean, Jürgen Klopp was talking about how everybody needed to be in the right mood, yeah. the right fit, including the, the hot dog, hot dog sellers <laughs> at Anfield. And it proved to be true. I mean, I'm asking myself again, how are you putting... Angelino at left fullback, a guy who has what four Premier League games under his belt against arguably not just the best team in in England now, perhaps the best club side in the world. Why are you doing that to the young man playing with a makeshift fullback? I, I guess they didn't understand a lot of the things that were going on okay. in the game, and then you also got the sense at the point that. Sergio Aguero should have been yanked because he was wasting a lot of their glorious chances. Chances he would typically convert, he was wasting them. I felt like Gabriel Jesus could have been introduced at the point he would have given Liverpool a lot more to concentrate on. Why? Because Gabriel Jesus doesn't touch the ball as many times as Sergio Aguero. He's more of a poacher. You see him here once, next time you don't see him. Next time you see him, he's in, the, in front of your goal and he's making things happen. So generally, I was let down by... Um, things from the Manchester City side of things, but also you cannot talk about that without highlighting the brilliance of what Liverpool yeah, did uh, uh, on the day. Yeah, maybe that, that, that takes us into the next, or the main phase yeah. of the discussion. So the people that, the question that people yeah. are asking, and people are asking this all the time, are Liverpool on course for, for a Premier League title? On Monday on offside, I was saying that they had answered an important question. Yeah. They had beaten Manchester City for once mm -hmm. at Anfield. Mm -hmm. Of course, they had done that two seasons ago. Yeah. But once they couldn't answer that question last season, it kind of tipped it. Yeah. But they've done so quite well. And mm -hmm. some people think that it is really the, the base of, of a possible title-winning uh, season. It is, actually. But it will be disrespectful to the rest of the season for them to think that this is wrapped up. It will be disrespectful for them to look at the other teams chasing them, say that, you know what, this could be wrapped up. And I, 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 I don't know other, about other people, but... I'm, I'm somebody who is like very open to recalibrating my stance depending on what evidence I have in front of me. Now, what do I mean by this? That Liverpool can't say they've won the title, but they also shouldn't even be thinking that Manchester City are their biggest adversaries. Now, you look at the kind of football Leicester City is playing, and this goes for both Liverpool yeah, and Manchester you know, and, City. And, and, and we'll come to Leicester mm -hmm. in, in a bit. Uh, but, 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 but that's a great point you're yeah. making, that there are other contenders. Yep. In, 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 but, but, but basically, what, what, what I'm saying is, Liverpool can't say that this is wrapped up because we've seen them blow this type of lead before, even further down into the season. Remember last season, uh, in December somewhere, they already were uh, up by, what, close to 10 points, and they managed to throw it all away. And in a game of football, what happens is that it could be one or two really bad results and then everything just collapses on top of your head again. So it's, it's a really interesting situation going on with them. Imagine that they draw one game or they draw two games. Eventually, everything just comes back together again and then it all looks competitive. So for Liverpool, what they don't want to do is take their foot off the pedal or take their foot off the gas, but they don't also want to be looking over their shoulder. So just keep going. I think that at this point in time, the tension... The mental friction has been a little shuttled to the side so they can keep their eyes on just playing football. Okay, so uh, viewers, these are the pictures from that particular encounter. Ben, we'll try and deconstruct some of the strengths we saw from mm -hmm. Liverpool there. Clearly that front three 
And if they will win that title, that front will be an important part. Look at Sadio Mane, mm -hmm. making things happen there. Mohamed Salah, Bobby Firmino, an absolute nuisance. And there you had that rocket mm. from Fabinho. It's mm, an mm, absolutely mm. fabulous strike mm. from Fabinho, giving Liverpool that, that leader. So let's look at the things that could possibly come together to make Liverpool a title challenge. Yeah. That front three, and mm -hmm. we, we say a lot about the front three, but yeah. you just can't stop saying enough about yeah. them. How much should they contribute if Liverpool will win the league? Um, they are everything to this Liverpool setup, especially Bobby Firmino. And I, I, I kept asking myself how a guy who scores um, the least goals amongst the most potent front three in Europe is some way somehow deemed the most important player in the setup. Now, when, when the Jurgen Klopp system was being rolled out eventually, he was playing. A different role from what he's playing now. Now he doesn't seem to be too burdened with the task of scoring goals. He's supposed to be the link between Salah and also and Mane, Mane while yeah. dropping deep to help defensively, whatever. But you look at a guy like Sergio Mane, for instance, I cannot help but notice that he has improved his finishing immensely. Has he has he has he attained a new level? You say he's become important. How, how important is he? Without him, yeah. of the of the of the of the three, yeah. we do know Bobby Firmino's yeah. role. Yeah. Bobby Firmino's role. Between he, Sadio Mane, and Mo Salah, who do you think is more indispensable? And I remember we've asked this question before yeah. on the on the debate, but yeah. you've seen twelve or so games of the season. Who would Liverpool lose and say that, wow, we are in trouble? Mane. Definitely Mane. I mean, people look at the assist numbers of Salah and think that yes, he should be the automatic choice in terms of who the more important player is. But if you look at what Mane's body of work has been since he joined Liverpool. Now, Mane with Southampton and Salzburg back in the day was a winger who occasionally would score a goal. And then last season, no, the season before last season, he showed us that he was more willing to get goals. And then last season, he completely solidified his prowess. But watch that game with Manchester City again. And there were points in time where he practically dropped back into his own half to form um, a backup, to become a backup left back yeah. for... Robertson in, in, in the game. His level of energy and his level of tracking back to defend is immeasurable. Sometimes the things that make sense to a team the most do not show up in the numbers column. Yeah, but you look at the little things that the player has done to be able to elevate his team. I cannot look past Sergio Mane. When you need him to be unselfish, to lay off a pass for his teammate to be there, he will do it. This season, when Liverpool have needed him to score game winners, he's been there. When they've needed him to give them a cushion goal to be able to see out a game comfortably, he's been there. So, as far as I'm concerned, he, he just is that guy. And if you, if anybody would doubt this, you can go back to our prediction videos from earlier in the <laughs> season. I had Sergio Mane winning my um, MVP. Yeah. So, uh, I, I definitely believe that when it comes to Liverpool as a team, Mane is not just up there with Liverpool, but he's, he's if you take away, just peel away the layoff. Ronaldo and Messi, I think Mane is definitely Ballon d'Or level right in, now. In, interesting thoughts. We'll get through some of the messages, I'm sure, that have come in there. Let's, let's finish our discussion yeah. on Liverpool. Let's focus on the other components of yeah. the team, midfield and defence. Mm -hmm. um, your impressions? I, I think in, in 12 games, mm -hmm. a player like Jordan Henderson yeah. has also increased his profile. And I think he was fantastic against Manchester yeah. City. Shifting wide, playing like a right winger's yeah. role yeah. and helping Trent and all of that. Is it? Do you think now he's played his way into this team where he gets in not because he's club captain, but he gets in because he's actually doing something? Hmm. That's an interesting question. I, I I think that's neither here nor there. Um, there's a part there's a part of him that sometimes looks completely. I don't know the phrase for it. <laughs> like he doesn't belong, and and there are parts where you look at him and be like, wow, is that Hendo for real? <laughs> and, and I think what, what, from, from what you're asking me, he falls more within the second category. And I, 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 can't, I can't fault you because, look, sometimes effort is all that matters. It's not always about the tactics. Not, he, he has extra lungs to run into spaces mm. where other players will be gassed out. He will put in that extra tackle that will lead to a loose ball mm. that will lead to a counter-attack. He will be that guy who will be ruffling the opponent's best player into frustrating him, him into playing a poor game. So... In all honesty, on a tactical scale, he's just about a 5 over 10 player. But again, if you look at the intangibles of the game, and that is what I believe is what Jürgen Klopp has seen 
time and again that the average untrained eye cannot see. Yeah. The little things that make a team tick. Like I'm saying, the, 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 the tackle that will free up a loose ball that will result yeah. in a counter attack. And there you have Jordan Henderson that, that, running down that the sort right of thing. Way, exactly. Crossing it for Sadio Mane to help. Exactly. And, and in all honesty, there are matches where I have seen him play this right wing role and he's looked completely lost. So it's not as if this we are going I to mean, base this was his the role. argument. Was at Sunderland. Ex exactly. He actually played wide but, right. I'm not going to base my, my submissions purely based on this, but honestly speaking, he's proven that when Liverpool have needed him to play whatever role they have required to win a game, he's that guy. And, I mean, who best can you ask that from than your captain? Just finally, the, the full-backs. Um, yeah. As part of that defence, a lot of people say that Virgil van Dijk is the man. This season, he hasn't really kept a lot of clean. I think that this season, it's Trent mm -hmm. and Robertson. Somehow, yeah. from deep, they, they are... The no, I mean, listen to this. Like last season, <laughs> both guys recorded double digits in assists. Where does this happen again? <laughs> now, this, this, has, this has led us to um, almost a new football phenomenon where we are calling it the playmaking fullbacks. Yeah. That's, that's how crazy what Robertson and Trent Alexander Trent. Arnold are doing. And it's, it's, it's even crazier when you think about the fact that these are not. Players that were purchased for monumental money. No. Robertson from Hall City for £7, seven million. million pounds. In the space yeah. of time between Hall City and Liverpool's last two seasons, he's just about become a top three left back yeah. in the world. If not the best, best left in back. the world. And, and then, same with Trent Alexander Arnold. I do not remember in living memory a player improving so quickly from hot prospect to world class fullback. I, I do not remember it happening anywhere. And, and that's that's. Backed by numbers as well. Now, you look at that Manchester City game. They played 21 yeah. passes into yeah. the opposing half compared to Manchester City's five. And they were passing to each other very exactly. often. And, 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 and the goals. Exactly. That, that, that diagonal ball yeah. that eventually led to um, Salah's, goal. Salah's, Salah's goal. You just look at it and ask yourself, wow. This is, this is the two guys putting themselves in a different space from everybody else. And to be honest, these are two of the left backs that you can actually stick out your neck for and say that they can, they can give you almost a good measure of offense and a good measure of defense without having to sacrifice any. So Liverpool's, um, Robertson, Liverpool's, Trent Alexander-Arnold, I, I think as far as football is concerned now, they're in a space of their own. Well, they, are, they are doing big things there. Uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold and Andy Robertson yeah. powering Liverpool's title charge possibly from left-back and right-back or right-back and left-back, whatever.